Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO. And I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none, you know, my dad walk on. I want you to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, Facebook, Threads. You name it, we're on it. Just type in Boss Talk Podcast 101. Any platform, and you can find us. But if you want to see our visuals, go to our YouTube channel at Boss Talk Podcast 101 again and sign up for our membership package. You see all of our exclusive content and including all our full-length interviews way ahead of time. Thank you in advance for the support. Man, you also can catch us on Tumblr, tagged. Uh, you can also <laughs> catch us on, uh, what's that uh, thing that y'all go on uh, outside of uh, Google when y'all looking for stuff? What? Um, Pinterest? Pinterest. You can catch us on Pinterest. You can also catch us on... Um, I said any platform. Oh, I was just trying to give it to them. Dang. Uh, we everywhere doing everything. Everywhere. Let's get it. Hey, man, today we got a special guest in here. She don't need no introduction. She's a part of C4S. Um, this young lady right here, I've been seeing her bouncing all across the internet. <laughs> and it's a new dance, a new song. It's always popping when you're checking in with Destiny at C4S. What's going down? Oh, man, you know, I'm just living. Man, it's, it, we, <laughs> thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Thank man, we're going to get into your background just a little bit, try to find out who you really are. Our people want to know. Mm -hmm. They nosy. They are. Let's go. Right. So, Destiny, let's start out by telling our your fans and our fans, um, where are you from? Um, I'm originally from Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. um, and then I moved to California for like three years. And How old were you when you moved to California? Um, 18 or 19. Oh, so you were grown? Yeah. What part of Oklahoma? Uh, Oklahoma City? or No, nah, it was like country, like towards the panhandle, if anybody knows. What's it called? Uh, Woodward. Woodward. Yeah. Woodward. <laughs> Woodward. I went to college in Alva, if y'all know where that's at. Alva. Alva? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, what was it like growing up in Oklahoma? Man, <laughs> looking back, it's a whole different lifestyle. It's very... It's farm country. life, yeah, country, you know, a lot of modest people. Um, were you raised on a farm? Yeah. You were? Yeah. You you milk cows? Did, did well, my, my parents had chickens and ducks mainly. Okay. Um, then it's like other family had different like different cattle, animals, right. you know what I'm saying? So yeah. How many chickens y'all had? Like a lot. Yeah. So you had to go out there and get the eggs? Yeah, he still got them today. Really? I call him right now, he'd be like, yeah. Did you ever have to kill a chicken? No, I refused. Why? I refused. Why? He did. Like, my dad he didn't try force to get me you? to. He tried to get me to. And a hog. Oh, and you started time. crying. Like, yeah, I was like, no, I'm not doing that. No. I still ate it, though. You know? <laughs> it's like he killed it. I eventually still ate the chicken. That is <laughs> crazy. So, um, siblings? Yeah, I have uh, two sisters mm -hmm. and one brother. How older, younger? So, I got an older sister and an older brother and a younger sister. Okay, so you saw it in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you were raised with your mom and your dad. No, so I, um, my mom was actually in jail whenever I was born. So. So you were born in jail. Yeah, in my. In grandma, Oklahoma. Yeah. Okay. And my grandma ended up taking care of me and my older sister, and then eventually my younger sister too. Whenever uh, she came around. So your younger sister was born in jail too? No, I think she was. I don't know how that story went because my mom, like, we all have different dads, but the uh -huh. same mom. Right. So uh, I don't really know much about that her story. Mm -hmm. But I know that for the first two weeks I was born, um, I was like this with my grandma. So that's really like. You know. Do you know mm -hmm. that you are in the elite class? That you and Tupac both were born in prison? Really? Yeah. I did not know that he was born in prison. Yeah. Sheesh. <laughs> I don't know if that's a flex or what. Uh, it's a real big flex because Tupac is like right now, you know, being his his murder, you know, they just arrested Keefe D mm -hmm. for his murder 30 years later. Well, 27 years, 26, know, 27 man. years later. Um, you know, do you know who to, you ain't even 20. You ain't, I do know. You wasn't Tupac. born. I wasn't born, but my dad did introduce me to some Tupac music. Really? Yeah. But you know, like whenever your parents do that, you're kind of like, hmm. 
I don't want to listen to this, you know? It's crazy because my daughter is uh, 18 mm -hmm. and she loved Tupac. See, now I know, like before, I didn't like him like that, but it's really just because my dad introduced him to me. Now I'm like, you know, I'll, listen, like, I'll still listen to him. You know? Wow. So. So you yeah. said that your grandma um, took care of you, but then where was your dad? Mm. That's your dad's mom? No, so that's my mom's mom. mother. Yeah. Okay, so, so where was your dad? My dad was also, but he, he was in prison. Also? <laughs> yeah. So they, 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 he was they, in a he whole got different her. prison. Did yeah. they get arrested at the same time? Uh, I don't believe so. My mom was more in and out of jail. My dad was in prison. Yeah. yeah okay. So. So your, did you? Your dad is a real. He a stomp down prison convicted. What was he going for? Stealing, robbing, um, killing. As far as I know, <laughs> he did say he took the rap from my mom at one point, and then it was like bad behavior in prison. But I know once I came around and like you know he, he trying to change. Yeah. So, but it took him a minute. How long did it take for your mom to come out after you were born? Uh, my mom was in and out. Like she's. Uh, it was all the way up until like. Till you my were fifth old. grade year. And really? Then my dad got out finally, my fifth grade year, so I don't know how old I was. But somehow, since you know she was so in and out, mm -hmm. they saw that he was fit to take custody of me. Okay. So, so then you lived with your dad after that? Yeah, for like two years. Couple how did years. you like that? Because I know you were close with your grandma. You didn't yeah, probably no, want to even I leave your grandma. I tried running away. Like, what? I tried running away. I was like, you wanted I don't to know go back home. Right. Yeah, I was like, I don't know who you are. Um, like, what I didn't you not like about being with your dad? I mean, it's just like, I really was grown. I was brought up around women. So, mm. like, being around a, it was like a big, scary man. I was just kind of like, you know, uh, I miss my grandma, like, take me home. You know, mm -hmm. that's kind of where I was at. And I was so young. I was just kind of like, Nah. Till eventually he just say, you know what, go on, go, yeah. go back. Yeah. But so, he did, no, he, like, he still had to keep me just for the fact that uh, my grandma was very, like, lenient with her kids. So, um, so she my was mom not wasn't, strict. Yeah, my mom wasn't supposed to be around any of us at the time, but mm -hmm. she was depending on my grandma for support. So it's kind of like, you know. She ended up being around, so they was like, no, you can't go you back. You can't be there. Yeah, so. Yeah. Did you ever have a solid relationship with your mom or your dad eventually? My mom, no. Uh, I think um, I had a really, even to this day, it's like a healing journey, but I forgave them for myself for a lot of stuff, but I never really had that connection with them. My dad, I eventually got somewhat close to. He introduced me to, like, sports and stuff mm -hmm. that I really... Like, that's of, how yeah. you bonded with him. Yeah, so then after that, it was, you know, it was decent, but we always knocked heads, so. Mm -hmm. And there was a point where I didn't talk to him for, like, a couple of years. After the fact, like, whenever I was in high school, in my first year of college, I just didn't talk to him. Mm. And then right before I left to go to California, I was like, let, let me, me go ahead yeah, and Yeah, let build. me, like, you know. Yeah, try. Yeah. So. so your mom, was she on drugs? Yeah. I thought so because yeah. for the main fact that she was in and out so much. Yeah, it was, yeah. Oh, okay. And your dad was on drugs? I don't know his full story. I know he did at some point, um, but it was so many, it's like small stuff. Like, I remember he was telling me stories, and I don't know, like, that's his whole personality. That's all he really got stories about. So it'd be like, I don't know, he would stab somebody in there and have more time, but I do. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even want to like. Well, he was I'm impressive. Not, yeah, he was. And he was in Oklahoma prison. No, he was in uh, North Carolina or South Carolina. That's where my brother's at. So. Okay. So his mama actually got him, like my brother's mom. So, like I said, me and my sisters have the same mom, different dads. But my brother and I, I'm the youngest out of us two, and we got the same dad, different moms. Different mom. Okay. So I never met his mom, but I do know that she got my dad locked up a couple times for whatever. It yeah. sounds like it sounds like a movie. It do. Yeah. <laughs> it really do. <laughs> and I'm just trying to mind my business at this point. You know, I'm like whatever. But so, how did all of that affect you growing up? With with, with that instability with both parents and the only stability you sort of kind of had was your grandma and then how did how did you react how did you did you react like in a like were you on the streets did you you know so I was honestly like I was a little bad growing up but between whenever me and my sisters were together I was more like 
the mom of us, I was always making sure they would get up and go to school because my grandma, she worked at this pig farm. Mm -hmm. So she'd always leave early, you know? So I'd be like, nah, let's go to school. Come on, let's go. You know what I'm saying? But um, I don't know. I feel like it ca it definitely could have been worse. Um, I don't want to speak on like my sister that much, but right. she didn't really have a way out of that. Like me and my older sister, our dads took custody of us around the time I told you. Right. But my younger sister, she had, her dad was also like just crazy Bad. so okay. so she kind of had to stay there and she was just in the mix of all that mm -hmm. so but yeah i mean i think it really i'm humbled now like people would never know see me they're kind of like you know oh she's a white girl she's spoon fed whatever right you know and it's not that like i really it was hard. <laughs> so. But what changed your life? Because you said that before you went off to college, you know, you, you had to forgive. Mm -hmm. But what brought you to that position where you felt like, you know what, I need to do this for me? Because th that just doesn't come to you overnight. Yeah. Something had to, had to happen for that to come to you. So, uh, it's a lot. Uh, that's cool. Let's go. So, um, I feel like whenever I was introduced to sports is whenever I kind of got like a, I kind of got more motivation and you know like you have more constructive just construction in general in your mm -hmm. life whenever you are in sports and you have coaches and you know so I feel like that that was one thing that really helped me and then also growing up I had to pay for almost everything I wanted and needed because um, we bumped heads so much and I hated whenever people held stuff over my head like mm -hmm. no if you don't see from my perspective i'm gonna take this or you don't get your phone or i'm gonna take your truck or whatever you how know. did you pay for it you didn't yeah i had um, to work from 14 okay up until like college and i still okay. you know but i started working at 14 really like 13 like my first job was like a sign shaker <laughs> yeah really <laughs> yeah so it was cool though like like i wouldn't take it back it definitely it definitely helped build me up but yeah um Having to pay for everything on my own, that was the main thing. I knew I didn't want to be in Oklahoma. That kind of hit whenever I was in college. I was I was paying for everything, and it's something I was doing more based for my family. Um, and I never really knew what I wanted with that direction yet. So I just kind of, you know, it just felt like a hole. And I was in the medical field, and I was kind of like, nah. So whenever I decided to leave and actually start doing like social media and stuff yeah something like, that you wanted to do yeah i uh that's whenever i really decided to like put a lot of stuff behind me so i wasn't hurting for a new beginning yeah wow i want to jump into the music a little bit like mm -hmm. how did you end up linking with c4s like was, who how are you a white girl <laughs> uh um i didn't see it coming when I it first either. jumped off i see this white girl she that's how Getting I look. Getting to it. I can't dance like y'all. I've tried. I, if you look, you'll shit. see I've danced with them before in here. Mm -hmm. And mine don't come off like y'all's. Okay. So don't be offended. <laughs> but I'm just telling you, how did, just get, give us an explanation on how you even ended up uh, with C4S, C4S, C4S. C4S, C4S, C4S. So basically, um, it took a couple of years to build up any kind of social media platform for me whenever I did move to California. But I had basically, um, I started, I know I recognized them off of a song. It was called On The Flow. Yeah. Because I did a DC and I was like, ooh, I like this DC, you know? And I always loved dancing and all that, so that just came with it. But, um, <clears throat> oh boy, Prince ended up DMing me and asking for me to come out and be in a music video and just kind of see how the vibe went with all that. So I ended up doing that a couple times. And I don't know, it kind of like grew from there. Like we kind of fell off for months, like three or four months. And then some life happened and I was out here for like a couple months, kind of figuring everything out. They helped me through a lot. So I owe him and Unique, like I appreciate them a lot. Wow, just give me an ex uh, example of you you trying to you know get on the same wavelength with them when you first met them and trying to understand the dance moves you know I was, white girls are usually not that that's my you know. thing i was sticking to my roots i did know how to dance that's the whole reason white I girls usually can dance but they got even in the strip club they got a little sway about them yeah but they really don't do it like you doing it like right. give me an explanation of how 
you was able to gain the momentum with the rhythm that you be, you've become here in, in in recent times. Um, it really started back from, like I said, around college. Whenever I got introduced to TikTok, uh, I actually started dancing, and it's like a shame to go back and look at those. Like it's so embarrassing, <laughs> cringe, but. I did grow from that, and as I, you know, practice, practice, you know, consistently, I ended up starting to dance, and I started making my own dances, and it just all started flowing naturally. So, at first, I wasn't even trying to be an artist at all. Like, I was just like, no, content creator. That's kind of, you know, I was like, now I'll, I'll help make dances and stuff, but I'm kind of antisocial. I'm not out of my shell like that. So they pushed me to do more with it. Cause you weren't dancing in high school or like drill. Cause you say you did sports, yeah, no, but you didn't did, do drill or none of that. I did cheer, cheer? but it, well, it really wasn't, I mean. Not yeah, really. But it was mainly uh, track and field, sorry, <coughs> and basketball. And I signed for track and field, but I never danced like. Never danced. Yeah, that wasn't in me. <laughs> and you weren't singing at that time. Yeah, I was in choir for my sophomore and junior year of high school. And then my senior year, I kind of focused more on track because I was getting signed for that, so. Did you get any solo parts when you were in high school? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. they knew your talent then. Yeah, no, we had, it's like, um, we had, I forgot what kind of, like, it's not like a choir group, but we had four of us, and it was like, we all were different. A quartet. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like we did that, and we all had solos, and then, I don't know, I kind of, steered away from that after a while because mm -hmm. our school was super small so I didn't take a lot of that serious you know so when did you start to take your um singing seriously uh and why okay I've always sang um it was never really in front of people like I did it with choir and stuff but it felt more like you know it wasn't like hey sing the song for us you know in front of my class I would <laughs> what no I would right. never do that but um, it took really me getting over here. Like I said, I was still on the fence about it whenever I even met, oh boy, Unique and all them. So mm -hmm. um, they were just kind of like, Dad, just try it. Like, bro, what what you got to lose? Because they knew you could yeah, sing. Like, it's not really peer pressure. Like, they just seen that. So um, I feel like I tapped more into it and started actually putting more effort towards that. How long did it take them to convince you? Girl, I don't even know how many months. Uh, but I feel like, honestly, just a couple, just being around them and stuff, and I seen like the vision of everything and how big, like how big they Your were. Your potential. Yeah, like I just, I seen like. So you I saw seen, their vision in you. Mm -hmm. And I seen the vision and what they had going on, and I was like, mm -hmm. I need to just stop being scary. <laughs> For real, so. What do you think about it when you going to come, you go into the comments? What do you think about it when you go into the comments and you see that people say in the comments that you're trying to act black? That's the biggest. That is so. At first, I was like offended because I'm like, why does that matter? And I kind of knew stepping into this, um, like this group and record label, it would cause that controversy. But I don't know, like, it got to a point where I just kind of ignore that because um, it's at the end of the day, it's just negative people being negative and it's misery loves company. They're not getting paid to do that at the end of the day. And I'm getting paid to express myself in whatever way I decide to express myself. Um, and I don't think, I don't know, like, I know at first I was definitely, like, I would always pop off, I would pop back. You know, pop my shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, y'all are so dumb, whatever it may be. But now I'm just like, nah, y'all got it. <laughs> did you ever have, because, you know, being from Oklahoma, did you ever have, like, friends or family, actually, when they saw what you were doing and who you were doing it with? Mm -hmm. Did they ever, like, call you up and, like, what are you doing? Um, Whenever I was back home, I wouldn't say I was very close with anybody. That's why a big reason I left, mm -hmm. I was so easy to just, you know. Drop everything leave, in. Leave, you mm -hmm. know, so. I'm sure some have a lot to say, not that I care. Uh, my dad did a couple times at first, but um, he don't really speak on nothing now because it's kind of like, I don't ask you for money. I don't ask you for nothing, you know. I mind my business. I don't see the problem with 
how I'm affecting what you got going on, you know? So right. That's the main thing. I never really, whenever they did, if they did, like if I'm not remembering, I know I always would like be like, what are you doing for me? What did, you know? So you flipped it. Yeah, like, it's kind of like, I've been through so much and you know nothing about, but you're going to sit here and off of what you see, you're going to be like, nah, you know? Like, so you're not the type of person that try to get approval from family members? No. Or friends? Mm -mm. I'll laugh in their face before anything. And it's not out of, like, disrespect. It's just kind of like it feels disrespectful whenever that's brought up to me like that, you know? Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we're all just trying to, we're trying to live. We're trying to be happy. So. And, you know, he asked you, like, how did you get um, into C4S? But I remember at one point, weren't you also dating Joker before you got into C4S? <coughs> <laughs> I never dated Joker. Um, so he did, like, before a boy had hit me up, I had collabed with Baby Joker in okay. L.A. So he was already in California. That was, like, an hour and a half drive. We collabed. Two of my girlfriends went up there with me, and we literally walked around this park. We was just making videos. And I don't know if that's kind of like if he went back and communicated with, because I know he was still with C4S at the time. Mm hmm if he communicated with that and that was kind of like my way in i don't know how that all went but it was definitely never that like it was never that okay that's funny though wow you know uh, how is it did you how was it were you with you were with c4s when baby joker ended up uh, walking away from c4s yeah i was i was um i was really still in cali at the time but i was yeah i would say I was like in the process of 100% being transitioned into C4S. Wow. And, you know, you are uh, very observant. You know, um, uh, you, you dance, you got these steps going. What is the new, what's the new dance? What's the new, um, you know, something that you and uh, I see you and Unique going crazy on the internet. Like, that's Evil Twin. Like, what's, what's, <laughs> what's new? What, what, what can we look forward to? Um, honestly, new music in general from the whole C4S. Um, Dancing-wise, that's just going to come naturally. Like, I feel like that's every day at this point. Uh, but more new music, um, shows, that's, we're just trying to pop out. That's the main thing, you know, trying to get motion down here. Wow. So if I want my fans to know your um, vocals, ca vocal capability... Are you open to giving us, you know, singing a little song for us right now? <laughs> oh, that's tough. There's something I want to hear your range. I, I want to hear rap, you. right? Oh, I'm stepping into that. That's just something I'm yeah, like. Yeah, no, she you know, she I'm, sings. Mm, mm, mm. I want to hear. I want to hear your voice because I love. I love any song you choose to sing. So mm. I'm not even gonna put a song on you. You tell me which. You do whatever song you want. Okay. <laughs> you ready? Mm-hmm. I've been waiting all day, let's do some foreplay, come put it on me, you could have it your way, you don't gotta say too much, I already know, just take them clothes off, you know how this about to go, we don't gotta rush, just take it slow, oh, uh, oh, oh. Man, I like that. that's nice. That's all right. That sounds good. Sound yeah, but you sound good. <laughs> yeah, you sound great. Um, so, uh... I'm gonna drop a beat and you can freestyle next. No, I'm just, no, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna do you like that. But um, no, how can people get for, top three artists of all time, dead or alive? Any genre. Oh, this is your top three. That's tough. One, this is way back that I do. Who is your number one? Nipsey. Mm. Shout out, man. R.I.P. to Nipsey Hustle. Oh, Shout out to Black Sam Nipsey and the Hustle. family, I man. Did you cry when he passed? Yes. Away? He's hard. He is tough. I would say that. And number then, two, I like a lot of artists these days. Um, one more now recently is female artist, Ice Spice. I really mm -hmm. like her. I think a lot of people. A lot of people. Love yeah, her. she's she lit. Number three. Number three. Third one. Oh, Caesar. Mm. All right, all I right. Like SZA more than yeah. Ice Spice. Yeah. Wow. I think I did too more on the. Okay. Well, um, man. Um, what else? I. How can people get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out? 
Um, all Cause I know they be in your inbox. He, yeah. A lot of brothers be in your inbox. <laughs> you already know, right? Yeah. Let's quit playing. How can they get more people in your inbox? Let's go. Look, every <laughs> platform is the same thing. Destiny, Suzanne, it's the underscore in there somewhere. Maybe like Destiny underscore Suzanne. But if you find me on like TikTok or anything, everything's linked somewhere, you know? Or if you got my IG first, it's linked TikTok, Twitter, all that, so... Man. I'm so curious. How, how he many? He can I know it. Finally, how, man. Many, how many? How many followers do you have on TikTok? Uh over four hundred thousand. How many on IG? Um, uh, fifty plus fifty k plus. And how much on Facebook? Facebook. Uh, I got two different accounts because Facebook be playing. <laughs> but uh, all together, over two hundred k. But like my main account is at like one fifty. Oh, okay. So you love TikTok more than anywhere else. I do, but it's a love-hate relationship, girl. What you hate about TikTok? Everything. <laughs> they literally, I like that it's so easy to to make content because even now, IG, like trying to make a reel is so hard for me because sometimes it's hard to like find the sounds. But TikTok is like, ooh, I like this sound. I like this dance. Let me click it. You know, you can find different people doing it. Mm -hmm. But then on the off side, they're quick to like I don't know TikTok is they play favorites so they do <clears throat> my account was like um, it wasn't banned but it was under suspension for like a whole year a wow. year yeah so I still had it but I had to watch what I posted because it's like your next your next uh, report so you were scared to post it yeah I was scared to post I'm like and I had a whole backup account and it was at like 70k they took that one I was like y'all are messy so whenever you're in suspension are you still getting paid no tiktok at this for point i'm doing year? that for a hobby and like just promo wise and actual business on the side okay tiktok itself i can't go live no more on there tiktok mm. it's just kind of like i washed my hands them <laughs> you know it's just kind of there at this point but i do it more for myself and my personal business or like anything promo wise what's your personal business um so i <laughs> It's multiple things. So um, I have a Shopify store. I do stuff just to promote anything I do. I do um, OnlyFans. Oh. So I will push that kind of in that direction. Uh, you make good money on OnlyFans? Girl, <laughs> I ain't trying to, you know, inspire nobody. <laughs> but look, it's a bag. They say that's where it is. And some girls... Just show their toes. Some girls do a lot more stuff, but <laughs> some girls do a lot more stuff, but some girls only have to show their toes and they get paid a lot mm -hmm. of money. And Blueface, uh, he got a whole reality TV show on there and he get paid. Did oh, you that? can do that? That's how he met Krishan. Mm. Yep, because she came on his show on there. I thought OnlyFans was mainly just like a porn site. Like Everybody do thinks so that, you know right. what I'm saying? It is, people can choose to do explicit content, but overall, it's kind of like, with IG now, you can have subscriptions or like people who pay for different mm -hmm. content. It's really like that. Like sometimes people pay to watch you work out, or you know, it really just depends on the person. Mm -hmm. I feel like because people will pay if it's if it's a person they're trying to see do whatever at that point. You know. What do you do on there? So I do more. It's not really like explicit. It's lingerie. Oh, she gets down. <laughs> the money, right? <laughs> She'll make it Des tight. underscore Suzanne. <laughs> the OF is in IG, baby. That's all I got to say. It's nothing too crazy, though. Like, um, the only reason I really got on it is because uh, I'm under management with Creators, Inc. And there's it's like a whole team of people. Um, but they run all of it. Like, I drop content into a file, and then they, and then they do everything They do everything else. So everybody's like, whoa. You saying some freaky stuff on OF. You know, I'll get messages and I'm like, that's not me. Joke's on you. Like, I mean, it is me, but I'm not saying that right. <laughs> to you. You know what it's I'm saying? It's your content, but they're the ones yeah. saying whatever yeah. just to keep it going. So they know. They as long find, as you get they'll check. find you on Instagram and be trying to. Oh, what? Yeah. That's how they Facebook, get it. Facebook, they're like, I you saw were just you texting on me on OF. <laughs> I'm like, baby, no. <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> Oh, wow, Lord. thank you so much for coming on Boss Talk 101, man. We love you. We appreciate you for coming. I'm pretty sure you family, you will be back. C4S, is, this is their second home. They come here. They do their thing over here. They bring me to popping dances and everything else. So I'll be expecting to see you back on Boss Talk 101 here real soon. Check it, man. <laughs>
been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses yes, talk. Lord. And we out.